Yo, what's up guys? Today, I'm making a video on how I make my thumbnails. And basically, I'm just gonna go over all the steps that I did to make this thumbnail for Mitch. And then I'm gonna go over a bunch of my older thumbnails because a bunch of people have asked me how I did certain effects. So to start off, I have the Guardian render. This one I did in Blender. I have this Ogre screenshot and then this one i went in game and took the screenshot myself and instead of having a 3d model for the ogre i just i'm just using a 2d image because it's a lot simpler and while i do have a 3d model of a guardian you don't actually need to do 3d if you don't want to you can always just go in game emote with your guardian take a screenshot of that and cut it out same with your guns obviously you're gonna have a bit less control but you know if you don't want to learn 3d that's definitely an option the Guardian's already in place, so now I'm gonna match the rest to the Guardian. First, I'm gonna do the wall. I'm gonna hit Control T to transform, and then I'm just gonna place it roughly where I think it looks good. That looks decent enough. So now, before I even place the Ogre, there's an issue, and that's the bow of the Guardian on his knee, and I don't like that. And that happens sometimes in screenshots, so I'm gonna show how I would go about fixing it. Usually when you import images, they are smart objects. You can tell that because of this icon in the bottom right corner. Smart objects are nice because, for instance, if I apply a quick like effect on it, like a blur, if I apply that, I can see the blur that's applied. And if I want to change it, I double click on it and I can change it. And if I don't want it, I can hide it or I can delete it. Now, if I were to duplicate this, clear smart filters. So if I reset it, now if I right click on this and I do rasterize layer, that's gonna make it not a smart object. Now, if I add a blur again, I hit okay, I can't change it, it's applied. I can technically undo, but if I've done a bunch of other steps after this, I might not be able to undo all the way. So smart filters allow you to be non-destructive. I would always, almost always keep that on. There are some cases where I would turn it off. The reason I'm saying this is to clean up the bow in front of the knee, we actually can't do that while it's a smart object because we're gonna be manipulating the pic like actual pixels on the layer. Technically, I could. what you could do is rasterize, remove the bow, and then convert it to a smart object again by right-clicking and convert to smart object. But what you can do with smart objects is if you just double click on the layer icon and now here we can actually edit the pixels on the image and then when we go back it's going to be updated here so i'm just going to zoom in and then press l for the lasso tool or you can do any other selection and i'm just going to roughly mask the bow and then now i do shift backspace that's going to bring up the fill menu and make sure you're in content aware. That's just going to like look around the selection and then just fill the selection with whatever's around it. And that looks decent enough. From far away, it looks fine. You have to hit control S, otherwise it won't update. And now if we remove the blur, because we don't actually need that. Now there's no more bow. If you zoom in, you can see where the bow was sort of like because of the way it filled. I'm not going to bother like making it look perfect because when you're zoomed out, you're never going to see that. So. Next step is to cut out the ogre. There are a couple different ways you can do that. There's a couple different selection tools. What I will have to do is manually cut it out. So I'm just gonna hit P for the pen tool and then start cutting it out. Depending on how complex your the model you're cutting out is, this will take longer, but... And you also do not have to be perfect when doing this because we're gonna... This image is going to be like zoomed out, and then you have to keep in mind that it's going to be the size of a thumbnail on the screen. So, and to move around while you're oh, while you're zoomed in is hold space, and then you can move around. And then, if you want to zoom, it's Alt and scroll wheel. So, if you were to bring in a your own like guardian screenshot from in game, if you didn't want to do 3D, this is basically what you would do. And if there are holes like this, for now ignore them. We're just going to do the outline first. And we're going to deal with those later. And also, if you accidentally make, click, do some weird stuff, you can always control Z to undo like each individual click. And right now I'm doing just left clicks. If you hold and drag, you can do curves as well. Uh, 
there we go. So once you have everything selected and you end on the starting point, then you click on selection. Make sure you have the same settings here. And now we're gonna hit the mask tool. That's gonna mask the ogre out. We can press V to move him, place him roughly here. Oh yeah, and also I'm gonna do the cut out certain holes. For instance, this one, like those that are noticeable. So I'm not gonna go and do like these small ones or like the small ones in the chains, but this one is big enough that it's noticeable. So again, pen tool, there we go, selection. Now we can't hit this tool again because we, the mask tool, because we already have the mask. So make sure you select the mask and then backspace to delete. We're going to do the same thing here. And what's cool about the mask tool is even if you make a mistake, you can always fix it because it's non-destructive. I'm going to select the ogre and then I want him to be a bit bigger. Um, and also I think in the thumbnail, he was, if you right click, you can, while in the transform, uh, when, when you hit control T, you can right click and then flip horizontal. And there we go. Okay. So now I don't like that blight in the back. So one way you, you can hide it is by placing the ogre on top, but then his actually, yeah, I think that's the easiest way. Another way you could do it is the same thing that we did before. Double click, select around it. Huh? Actually worked pretty well. Uh, now with this background image, um, there's the foreground element, which is the this archway and the wall. Then there's the midground element, which is the floor and the stairs, and then this broken part, and then the background, which is the rest of the castle. If I just applied a blur on this image, it would blur everything equally, and I don't want that because this wall is supposed to be more in focus than what's in the back. So I'm gonna create three different planes: foreground, midground, background. There's a few different ways you could do this. I'm gonna show one way. So I'm just gonna duplicate it three times. So we got the foreground, midground, and the background. Okay, so I'm gonna hide them. I'm gonna click on the foreground. Same thing as before. We're gonna have to cut this out. So pen tool, and then there we go. Selection and mask it out. Next up, midground. Make a selection again. Cut it out. And we can we don't have to do anything for the background because it's hidden by the rest of the layers. Now I'm gonna place the layers in the correct order. So Hunter would be up front, then the wall. Then I want the midground to be above the ogre so that his feet are hidden slightly. And then the background. Next step is add the camera raw filter to to the hunter and to the ogre. To add the camera raw filter, the shortcut shift control A while you have the layer selected. This is a great tool and I use this pretty much for everything. You have a lot of things that you can control. And here for this part where I'm just affecting the individual like uh, characters on the screen, I'm not gonna be using all of these. Um, usually what I would do, it depends uh, from uh, render to render, but um, sometimes I'll just boost up the exposure a bit. I boost the vibrance, a bit of saturation, clarity and texture as well. And then here you can mess around with these depending on your image. Sometimes if it's too dark, you can bring the shadows up. And then after that, I go in detail and apply a lot of noise reduction usually and a bit of sharpening too. If you hit P in this um, volume, the camera raw, it does uh, before and after. And I hit OK. Hold Alt and then grab the camera raw filter and then just drag it over to the ogre. And that's just going to duplicate it onto him. And this looks pretty good already. Now, after that, I have to apply the blurs to the background. Just go in filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, now, I could do the same thing and apply a Gaussian blur to the floor and the stairs. But because the stairs are going to be are further than the ground, which is closer, I'm actually going to apply a field blur, which is inside blur uh, gallery. And what this allows me to do is I have the this point that I can move around and I can place more points and this outer circle controls the amount of blur. So I'm going to place one at the top of the stairs with a little blur. And then the one at the bottom is going to have no blur or just a bit of blur. 
compared to the so that way it creates like a gradient of a blur instead of everything being blurred the same and then hit okay and there we go the blur for the stairs and the floor and then for this technically because it's in the foreground i do not want to blur this too much because it's supposed to be in focus but there's a bunch of like small details that i do not want in uh, i could apply camera raw and increase the noise reduction or one thing i like to do is go and filter noise dust and scratches and then here play around with the radius and the threshold controls like how much it does so the lower it is the more it will affect it and the higher it is the less it will affect just so like all of these like small like specs and everything like it just smushes them all together so that there's not that much detail in the brick now i'm gonna add uh, some shadows behind the hunter because this is supposed to be a darker area and like you can see the more light in the bottom right here so I'm going to make a new layer, select the brush tool, and here you can just go in the general brush and select soft round, and then alt click on like a dark point on the image. And then you can hold alt, right click, and drag your mouse left to right to increase the diameter of the brush. And if you increase up or down, it's going to increase the or decrease the hardness. A pretty soft brush and a pretty big one. And then we're just going to just manually create the shadows. And if you hold the tilde key next to the one on the keyboard, that's going to erase with the same brush. So that way you don't have to go to the eraser. You can just keep being on the brush tool. That just cleans up the image a bit. But yeah, one thing I forgot is to do a bit of camera raw for the background as well, or like all of the background elements. Select like background, control shift A, just to bring up the vibrance. You, you can just play around with these and then whatever looks nice, you just stick with that. I'm just gonna duplicate that same effect to the rest of the environment so I don't have to do it manually. And actually for the this one, I'm going to increase the exposure. Uh, next step is I'm going to manually paint in the shadows on the hunter. New layer, hold Alt, and then click between the two layers. So you get this icon, and that's going to create a clipping mask so that when I apply anything, it's only going to affect the hunter. So only going to affect the layer below it and nothing else. I'm going to change this blend mode to multiply, reduce the opacity, and then select a dark point on the hunter, and then just start adding extra shadows. After that, I'm going to do new layer, same thing, create a clipping mask. And this one, so here, I depending on, I'll try a few different things usually, but it's either on screen or add or color dodge. Uh, you just play around with whichever one looks better. Um, in this case, I'm on screen. Lower the opacity a bit, select a brighter point on the hunter, and I'm going to add highlights as if because the light is coming from outside i'm going to add some rim lights so only on the edges there we go and i think in the final one i actually had another one which was on color dodge and for this one i had the the blue glow of his uh, chest and this is just to make the colors pop a bit more Make sure the opacity is pretty low, like 30% roughly. Because technically the gun would be in shadow, but because we want to show it off, we're going to add a bit of the glow to make it pop. Uh, after that, I am going to do the same thing for the wall. So make a new layer on top of it. Go to screen, go to the opacity. Uh, select like a bright point somewhere or you can manually select the color but I just usually color pick from what I have on screen and then yeah maybe a bit lower and just add like a rim light 
after that I wanted like some dust or smoke or fog effects where the ogre is and on top of the hunter. So you could find any of those like fog or smoke or dust elements online. So the one I used was actually this. It's a King's Fall image because I like the smoke effect on the bottom. But there's the logo. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Double click, hit L, and then shift backspace. Boom. And it's done. Okay. Now, uh, this one is going to go on top of the ogre, but behind the wall. And I'm going to set it to add. So I want it to pop and then scale it down. Go in filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Reduce it a bit. Reduce the opacity. Actually, I think screen probably works better because it's a bit too intense. And then I'm going to create a mask on top of it. Soft brush again, and then just going to erase some of the top part of it. It's as if like there was wind and then it picked up some of the snow. And there is an issue that is that it's a bit too like teal. It's not as blue. So what I can do is control B. No, not control B. Control U while I have it selected. That's going to bring the hue and saturation. And I'm just going to shift the hues slightly more towards the blue. It's very subtle but it just feels more like the rest of the environment. Then I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to hit Control J. And this one I'm going to bring all the way at the top above the hunter. This one is going to have less blur. And I'm going to reduce the opacity. Uh, next is the snow. Same thing for the snow. You can find snow effects online. I have this. I got this off of texturelabs.com. Uh, so I want I want it above the ogre. Actually, one thing I realized, I think, uh, yeah. So the smoke goes behind the ogre. I'm going to set it to screen. So it takes away the black background. And then now it's like stationary. So we need to blur it. So go in blur, motion blur. And then select the direction and then the amount you want. And this is whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to create a mask and just mask out a bit of the ogre. And then in the final one, what I did was with the snow layer selected, I hit Control J to duplicate it. So that just makes the snow pop. There's two of it. And then on the second one, I erase a bit more. Just because I don't want it to pop everywhere. Actually, I think, let's see. See if the snow is better when it's in the background. I think I prefer it in the background. Yeah. So you just play around here, whatever you like. Now most of this is finished. Uh, one thing I don't like is how dark the face is. So I'm gonna go in the highlights and select the light point and then just make the face a bit brighter. Next up, above everything, I create a new layer. Uh, press G, or if it's on the paint bucket, it's like the gradient tool. Select the one where it's a color and the the other one is transparent. And I'm going to color pick a pretty dark color on the screen. And then while holding shift, drag up. And I'm just creating a shadow at the bottom so that when I add the health bar effect, it just looks nicer that way. So the background isn't competing with the, the health bar. I will show how to do the health bar, how to create it manually, but for now, I'm just going to paste it in. There we go. And then now you just do whatever final adjustments you want. You can make more layers on top of this. You could technically make layers on top of the ogre. So make a layer, create a clipping mask, um, select the light color, change to screen, for example, lower the opacity. If you want to add more light to the ogre, make another one, set it to multiply, lower the opacity, select a darker color, add a bit of shadows on them. And then once you're happy with 
most of or like everything that you've done. Select the topmost layer and then hit Control Shift Alt E. It's gonna basically duplicate everything, merge it into one. Now you can add the final adjustments. Now this will not be a smart object by default. So right click, convert to smart object. And then we're gonna do Control Shift A for camera raw. And then here's where I do the final adjustments. So I boost up the clarity, boost up the texture. Also, you can zoom out usually here to make it the size of a thumbnail roughly. That way you have a better idea of what it's gonna look like. Cause if you're constantly editing this close, it might look good up close like this, but then when you zoom out, it might not. So some vibrance, saturation, some sharpening, and then in effects, I usually add a bit of vignette. Make sure it's negative. If it's positive, it's gonna be a white vignette. If it's negative, it's gonna be a black vignette. Just darkens the edges so you're more focused at the center of the screen. Then you can play around with the color mixer. So for instance, if I wanted my blues to be slightly like more teal-ish, I would do that. I would like push them. I can also manually control the saturation of eight, like each different type of color. And then you can add some color grading as well. I'm gonna make the shadows a bit bluer. And you can always do like hit P to do ba uh, back and forth. And you can see how much that changes it. And then hit okay. And there we go. That final adjustment usually does a lot of the work. And then you can hit Control Shift Alt W. Uh, make sure you have it on JPEG. If it's PNG, the file size is gonna be too big for a YouTube thumbnail. JPEG, usually I would do quality seven, but sometimes that's gonna be over two megabytes and max thumbnail size is two. So I can keep it at six as well. And you're not gonna notice the difference really when it's the size of a thumbnail and then you just export. And that's basically one example of a thumbnail. I think this one covered a bunch of different techniques that I would use, like for instance, the um, blurring the background in different type of ways, adding the shadows and like manually adding the shadows and highlight layers on each like character that's gonna be on your thumbnail. And then like adding extra effects like the overlays of uh, the snow, the smoke and stuff like that. Next thing I wanna show is how I do the boss health bars. And I've got this screenshot here as a reference point. To start off, I just make a new layer and with the box selection tool, make the shape of the health bar and then alt backspace to fill it with whatever color. It does not matter right now. After that, we're gonna duplicate it four times. The topmost one is going to the is going to be the border. So double click on that. Reduce the fill opacity to zero. Stroke. Make sure it's light gray. Size can be whatever you want. I like when it's set to inside, you can test that outside or center, up to you. And then hit okay. After that, hit control T and then hold down shift and alt and then scale it out on the sides and then do the same up and down shift and alt. Next up is the shields or the immune health bar, I guess. Double click on that and then color overlay. Again, make sure it's a light gray, 100% opacity, normal mode, and then reduce the opacity, and then press Control T and scale it down while holding Shift, scale it down to the center or slightly below center, up to you. Oh, and double click on it again and add a drop shadow, a dark gray on multiply with zero distance, zero spread, and with the size you can play around. I keep it fairly low and then hit okay. After that, it's the light yellow health bar, double click, color overlay, and then you can color pick or manually select the color. I'm gonna hide that for a second. The next one is the main health bar. Same thing, color overlay, there we go. And the final one is the background. So I'm gonna apply a drop shadow to this. As you can see, there's a harsh transition between the shadow and the actual object. So we're gonna add a blur as well. There we go. You can reduce the opacity too if you want. And then enable everything. Now if you wanna do the final stand separation, that one only happens on the light yellow and dark yellow. Select those two and put them in a group. 
Control G and add a mask to that group. That's going to mask both of those out. And then with the rectangle selection tool, draw a shape and then Alt Delete or Alt Backspace. And then if you want the light yellow health bar to be smaller, select that, make a selection on how big you want it to be, and then create a mask. And if you want this smaller separation, same thing. Go into the mask of the actual group, Alt Backspace, there you go. And what's cool with this is you can always change where those are because it's a mask. After that, you can group everything into a single group. Once you're happy with the final stands, where the final stand separations are and everything, you control Alt E while you have the group selected. That's going to make a duplicate so that your actual construction layers are safe if you want to come back to them and change them for a different boss. And you have this single usable image. Then I'm going to do the text underneath. And here, the bungee font they use is a paid font. So I'm just going to use a font that looks similar and make it white. Double click on it, add a drop shadow. You can select the health bar and the name. Control Alt E again, hide the bottom two layers. And now you have a single layer with the name and the health bar. Hit Control T and then click this icon. Select Arc in the warp and you can select by how much it warps or you can manually enter the value here. There you go. And you can always go back, change whatever you want here, make a duplicate, change the text, and then add the warp. Another thumbnail that people wanted me to go over was the solo explicator one. I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. This is just a very zoomed in background screenshot of the explicator arena, and it has a lot of blur and a levels adjustment that adds a lot of contrast. So the values are pulled in. After that, I have the planets in the background. And for all of these, if I disable the mask, I just found a bunch of different screenshots of the planets from different angles. And I just created a circular mask around each of them. And all of these have the same, like a camera raw, an oil paint, and an unsharp mask. Camera raw is similar to what I showed previously. Oil paint gives it like a, I mean, what it says, an oil paint look. And then a non sharp mask to sharpen it even more. But these two aren't super necessary. Just the camera raw is going to be enough most of the time. And then I have the Guardian, same thing, camera raw filter. I have my shadow layer. I have the shadow for the health bar. I have my health bar and the text. And then here I just cut this part out so it seemed like his arm was in front of the health bar, but that's not super necessary. An extra layer of shadow on top. And then this one is a glow layer. It's on color dodge. And then I just color picked whatever color was underneath and then just painted it on. It's at 62% opacity. And it's just for like all the glowing elements on the warlock. I have some more planets in the front. Then I have this layer that is on linear dodge at 35% opacity and same thing. I just color picked the color of the planets and just added a bit of glow effects. And then there's this. I'm just going to put it on normal, 100% opacity. I will include this picture in the description. It's just a gradient and it's set on overlay with 45% opacity. Now the focus is around here because this is a bright point. And when I enable it, the bright point goes up here. So now you're focused more up here. And then the final merge everything with Control Shift Alt E and then apply the final camera raw. This is the next thumbnail I'm going to go over. I'm going to hide everything and start from the bottom. This is a screenshot I got in game. And then I used the field blur to blur the background more than the foreground. I applied a camera raw filter with, and I increased the saturation a lot. Then I have another layer on lighten on 35% opacity that just is a light blue. I just selected the brush tool and with a light blue color, just made the top of the screen a bit lighter. Then I have a hard light or this can be multiply as well at 60%. I just created a purple emission coming from the warlock because I knew the warlock was going to have void effects. So I just created the glow lighting up the ground underneath them. And then I have two images for the void effects, then the icons. And for the icons, I just added a 
a layer on top on color dodge with the teal color just to add the bit of glow. Next is just the embers. These are just embers that I tinted purple. So it looks like void effects. Then we have the thrall in the background. These were, when I rendered them out, they had, I already used purple lights. I also added an extra layer of glow in Photoshop as well. Then we have the warlock and I have this, an extra layer of glow to make him stand out even more, even more embers, the front thrall, and these have a shadow on the edges. And then again, the final camera raw filter. I'm also gonna go over the solo nest thumbnail. And this one is very similar to what I showed earlier for Mitch. We have our background and then I duplicated it and made a mask and made everything except these two parts darker and an additional shadow layer for where the guardian was gonna be. Then we have Nezarak. And for this one, I have the shadow layer, but for the highlights, I did it differently. I basically manually painted a rim light around him. So he stands out more. This is a bit more time consuming. And then I have just a bit of glow at the top. Then we have the guardian and same for the guardian. I added another rim light and a shadow layer. And all of these obviously have the camera raw and everything on them. Then the shadow at the bottom for the health bar. We have the health bar and the text. One last thing I'm going to do is show what I do with like weapon or armor icons. And I'm just going to use this thumbnail. Everything in here is the exact same as I showed previously. So I'm not going to go over every detail for the actual icons. I have a camera raw filter and because these images are usually low res and I get them from just light.gg, I apply a lot of noise reduction. So they're not really that pixelated and you can still kind of see the pixelation, but when it's the size of a thumbnail, it does not really matter. Apart from the camera raw filter, I also, if you double click on it, I apply a stroke and here you can choose how big you want it to be. And then an inner shadow. Sometimes I'm gonna actually use the inner shadow to be a shadow and darken the edges, but sometimes you can also set it to a lighter color and instead of multiply, set it to screen or um, color dodge or linear dodge and then control the opacity that way. So it's instead of darkening it, it's brightening it up. And then after that, I also make a new layer on top and I set that to overlay. And with a brush tool, I just color pick just an orange color or a yellow color. And then I just draw on it. So it just brightens it up even more. And that's it. That's all I do. Right, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully it was useful. And if there's anything I missed, let me know. I will try to answer that. I'll also include all the elements that I used in the description if you want to follow along. And if there's any better ways to do certain things that I showed, please let me know. That would be much appreciated.